I was interested in Evil Land 2 upon watching its trailer due to the gimmick of playing a JRPG that spans the history of the genre's graphical styles. Little did I know that this was linked to a Chrono Trigger-esque variation on time travel. Yep, you start in the present day of 16-bit, and then by triggering a power monolith, or sent back in time to the world of 8-bit. There's even a small section at the start of the game when you're playing in the graphical period of the Game Boy. It's a great hook, and I wish I'd been able to play enough to see what the future worlds look like. There's a section of the game after you escape the Colosseum, where to flee the town you find yourself in, you need to pay a shady character lots of money. To earn this money, you have to start doing odd jobs around a town. This means mini-games. There's a waitressing game that's a variation on Diner Dash, and looking after the kids at the local orphanage sends you around town playing hide-and-seek. Evil Land 2 wears its love for gaming and the JRPG genre on its sleeve and uses that love to make fun of elements of these games. It's difficult to tell what is parody or homage though, and what is busy work through antiquated design. Such things tend to work better when they're quick, such as the Professor Layton inspired puzzle earlier in the game. Now combat is a hack and slash affair, but there are sections when it turns into a platformer, and you get to play with some fun mechanics from a bunch of other games. Even the bosses are a nice touch in that defeating them is a game of pattern recognition and being able to get that one hit in before letting the pattern play out again. Yes, you can use your companions to unleash a super attack, but often it's easier to let your sword do the work. <laughs> 